Uh, well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Thank you for being with me today. Uh, and it's good morning uh, to our friends uh, on the uh, great continent of Australia. And uh, thank you, Mickey, uh, my man. Be lost without you, wouldn't I? <laughs> and of course, good afternoon to our friends across the ditch in the Shaky Isles. And a very early good morning to those of you in Ireland, UK and Europe, uh, whenever you wake up. Uh, so great to have you with us, folks. And oh boy, what a time, isn't it? It's just all happening everywhere and uh, Albert's with us, Andre's with us, thank you, Bill's with us, haven't seen you for a while Bill uh, and uh, many Bills, another few, David's with us, uh, Greg Palladini, uh, our star uh, trader from and uh, wealth fund manager from California is with us, good to have you with us uh, Greg and Harold Foose of course, you're going to enjoy this Harold, Harold's a gold bug and a man of uh, considerable quality um, he uh, lives in Redding, California, and uh, a number of years, probably a large number of years now, Harold, uh, uh, I did a, uh, a tutorial uh, live uh, at Redding, and uh, uh, Harold uh, was so gracious uh, to me and uh, looked after us so well. It was wonderful. But, Harold, we're going to talk a lot about gold today, uh, so I know you're uh, keen on that. Uh, and uh, uh, Gig just arrived. Good to have you with us, Gig. Uh, over there in uh, northern, here we are, Jerry. Jerry Winter, there's a voice from the past. Jerry's a broker, great friend of mine, personal friend and a wonderful guy. Grand to have you with us, Jerry, and so glad you can make the time to be with us. Leo's with us. He's doing a, a tutorial. Mark, of course, he's the king of the tutorials. Uh, Mickey D., uh, who is a super trader. Miles is with us. Partho's with us. Peter Mack, who's not a day trader, is with us. And <laughs> Trevor's with us, of course. And Vicky. Vicky, lovely to have you with us. We don't have many ladies and we treasure the ones we've got. We need more. Okay, well, uh, let's move on. Uh, chaos, uh, mayhem indeed, uh, and uh, the secret source that solves all problems. Uh, let's see what we can find from all of this. Uh, and as you know, markets are rational, orderly, and sometimes predictable. Uh, and amazing just how orderly they've been through all of this uh, drama. Um, and the chaos uh, started off with um, Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, um, collapsed in spectacular fashion uh, Friday last <laughs> just days after it announced big losses. The biggest bank failure in the United States since the Great Recession. It was the 14th largest bank in America big deal. If you haven't already read about it, um, there's a few interesting points. Firstly, commentary tends to be focused on its particular nature as the bank for a lot of startups, a lot of uh, new technology companies and what have you. The real point of this though is it's simply a total failure to understand anything about markets. Now, uh, this will come <laughs> as a surprise because uh, amongst other things these people are required uh, as a, some part of their fe federal charter to have uh, a dedicated risk officer who presumably is a person of some competence um, and uh, a board of directors who have presumably some wide general knowledge of uh, financial matters uh, but uh, it turns out that wasn't the case uh, and what actually triggered it all is that uh, bonds uh, the banks uh, hold a large number of uh, bonds and other um, federally secured, uh, approved securities. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, Greg, right. Uh, leave the bank failures to start here in the great unwashed of Silicon Valley. Uh, yeah, there they are, mate. <laughs> and. Um, what they uh, found out uh, belatedly, uh, and uh, it's hard to comprehend uh, that this is true, you think I'm making this up, um, the value of their uh, bonds uh, portfolio uh, was going down, 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 down as interest rates went up, up, up. Uh, and they had a bit of a shortage of capital as things tightened up a bit in the uh, tech sector in particular. Um, and uh, to get some liquidity, uh, they were forced to sell 21 billion dollars uh, of the securities they were holding, uh, government securities largely, some mortgage securities, 
um, and they had a loss uh, of uh, 1.8 billion uh, on that 21 billion of sales. Uh, and then they sought to raise 2.25 billion in uh, new capital, uh, and that's what brought the whole thing undone. <coughs> that uh, um, uh, it, it announced a deal with General Atlantic to sell another 500 million common stock, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and all that from Forbes. Uh, but uh, that uh, started the uh, hair running, and uh, in a matter of days, uh, there was a just a full-blown run on the bank. Uh, being uh, roared along, uh, yeah, the incompetence is unbelievable. Or anything else, we don't know. But uh, that's the point I'm trying to make, Andre. It, it's hard to believe this level of incompetence, uh, but we'll see more as I go along with it. But that was the the start of it all. And then, uh, of course, um, the question turned to uh, uh, what part of these uh, funds, the massive funds on deposit with this bank, uh, are covered by the government and of course the FDIC uh, it, it ensures uh, individual accounts in licensed banks, federal banks, uh, for up to a quarter of a million. This particular bank uh, only had less than six or seven percent of its accounts that were in that quarter of a million size, the rest were mega mega accounts and you could really call Silicon Valley Bank, you could really call it a very rich man's bank uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's the uh, heart of uh, the Democratic Party, isn't it? And um, uh, government move at great speed and haste uh, to do uh, some amazing uh, tricks, that some of which we haven't seen before. And we'll get to that as we go along. Uh, but here was the main thing that uh, the FDIC, supported by Treasury and the Fed, uh, they said that um, uh, they would have almost unlimited bank loans against approved securities but you could value them at cost. Now, remember, um, the uh, event that caused the uh, problem uh, at SVB uh, was that sale of 21 billion of securities, and they had a loss of 1.8 billion on that sale. Uh, and now uh, the uh, various organs of the federal government uh, announced, well, that's okay, guys. We'll continue to, we'll, to lend to you. In fact, we'll create a new facility to lend to you against approved security. Uh, you don't have to take a haircut, which normally the federal banks require. Uh, and what's more, we'll lend to you uh, based on the book value uh, of the securities. You don't have to write them down. In other words, no mark to market. What you have instead is mark to fantasy. And if this sounds familiar to you, it should, because this was the whole issue in the 2007-2009 market crash that uh, mortgage securities in particular were not being marked to market and uh, when the uh, eventually came out what they were really worth uh, even uh, when they were halfway through that travail um, it meant uh, banks in general some of them big banks would be wiped out completely uh, so the government came up with uh, its Obama era bailout but there you are uh, this is the issue that busted um, SVB, but yet the government is going to just turn a blind eye to it and say, we can, we will value your uh, uh, securities at your book value. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, one rule for the big banks and a different rule for everyone else, including uh, private investors who hold securities, they're wearing the loss on it. Uh, it's uh, just ridiculous stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the next shoe to fall was the signature bank. Um, and uh, there's a bit of a blurb here from Bloomberg on it, all that you can read. Um, and it was a, it was bigger than you think. It was the 17th largest bank uh, in America, uh, and uh, uh, SVB was the 14th largest, so not that far away. Uh, but it was very heavily involved in crypto, uh, crypto lending, financing of uh, crypto um, uh, companies, etc. Uh, and uh, Dear old Barney Frank, those of you who remember him um, as a uh, United States legislator, uh, never one to be stray far from the uh, parental teat. Uh, he's a director of it. Uh, and uh, uh, here we are. Um, and that of it itself, Signature Bank, was the third largest bank failure in US history. And since then, of course, the Fed and uh, FDIC and Treasury and everyone else has been fighting desperately uh, 
uh, to try to cover all this stuff up and really cover up is the right word for it. Have a look at this chart. This is the US 30 year T bonds. This is the big daddy of securities. Have a look what's happened to it. It peaked in March 2020 and it's been downhill pretty much all the way since then. We're going to have a more detailed look at it, but basically start thinking of the heavy blue line through the middle is the mean or the median, uh, and then each step up is uh, one channel of standard deviation. <coughs> but this chart, and all my charts, we don't use normal arithmetic standard deviation. We use Daniel code ratios. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, every one of those deviations is 1.593. Uh, which is the strongest annual code uh, ratio in here. Um, and the point I put on here is I've put a little number over there to show you 128 correct 12. And what's that there for? Well, uh, that is um, about uh, August, September uh, 2013. And I put that there because uh, my wife and I had been, and my family, I took the kids with me, you see, <laughs> and the dogs, everything, uh, had been living in New Zealand. Uh, we went over there uh, to visit um, my wife's uh, family uh, for three months. Uh, they were elderly, and if one wasn't in hospital, the other was. So I said, well, if you'd like to go over, we'll, we'll go and spend three months over there and uh, give them a hand, uh, which we did. We finished up staying for 13 years, but <laughs> that was the time we came back to Australia. Uh, and I am particularly aware of what financial conditions were at that time, uh, because uh, I had to get myself up to speed on uh, the Australian economy and interest rates and what have you. And I can tell you that uh, the T-bond was, uh, is now higher, meaning the interest rate is lower, than it was back then. And back then, the economy was bubbling along. There was an ongoing property boom, not the mania that it developed into later on, but it was a solid ongoing property boom. Um, banks were happy to lend. Interest rates were, well, to me at the time, they seemed pretty reasonable. Um, and uh, as you can see, if you look where uh, bonds are now, uh, the uh, financial condition of markets, at least as regards the 30-year bond, which is the big daddy of them, is actually weaker or softer now than it was back then. So is the Fed just having a game? I mean, does this really look like uh, there's a serious attempt uh, to curb inflation? Well, if you manage to get interest rates only back to where they were uh, in 2000 um, uh, and uh, 13, 2012, 2013, I know there's been a lot of print written about it, and there's a few forests have died as a result of all the excitement and hyperventilating. But this is not a high interest rate regime at the moment at all. Uh, this is pretty much average. Uh, it's just what it was back uh, 10 years ago. So, you know, things aren't always what they seem. And I think that applies uh, double for anything to do with banks or federal banks. Uh, this uh, tortuous uh, device you can see on your screen now, folks. Uh, let's make me show it. Show it. Be sure this has a change for you. Yeah, uh, this is US T bonds. This is a very long-term chart. This is a 24-day chart. Every bar on this chart is 24 trading days. That's the Daniel Code equivalent of a monthly chart, if you like. Um, and uh, this starts all the way back. Uh, in uh, uh, 1999 when uh, Volcker uh, decided that inflation really had to be crushed and he upped the interest rates to uh, 20%. Uh, and uh, that uh, nipped inflation in the bud pretty effectively and a few other enterprises went with it. But I've been showing you this chart since 2007 periodically and we talk about it and I've been amazed as you've been as to how symmetrical this has been on the way up. If you look at the thicker red line on this chart going diagonally across, that's the mean or median of the Daniel Code trading channel. And you can see above that red uh, channel, one, two standard deviations above the mean took us right into the high, which happened right in that 89 cycle, March the 30th, 2020. 
and from then it's been downhill and every time it's got to support which was what these uh, uh, diagonal lines are the dotted lines uh, we've talked about it and I've said well if that level goes there's the next level if that level goes there's the next level and eventually got the stage I actually put a price on uh, for the second last level at 125 correct 10 uh, and it found support there uh, for a month or so and then a little rally uh, and then uh, broke below it um, we the next number I had on it was 114 correct 21 which would have been the intersection with the next dotted red line and it didn't get there um, but it may yet uh, so uh, it's very interesting and we went to some uh, trouble with this to talk about it because uh, a couple of our uh, clients are wealth fund managers um, and they were very interested in it. Now uh, this is just a blow up of it and, and it shows you the dates when these major uh, support levels were breached uh, March 2021, April 2022 and uh, the most recent uh, break was uh, in September uh, 2022 uh, and then uh, a rally back up one bar past its 124 cycle, uh, which gave it support on its time cycle. Uh, and you'll notice how uh, it topped out um, at uh, an 89 cycle, one bar past that. So uh, the highs and the lows are both uh, consistently one bar late uh, on time cycles. Uh, we say they are valid for plus or minus one period. Uh, that's how accurate they are. So uh, let's see what all this kerfuffle was about. Uh, and uh, uh, Greg, if you're with us, you'll remember uh, uh, talking on a, at one of our uh, webinars about uh, how uh, disastrous the fall in uh, bond prices was. Um, uh, and uh, that was that was before we reached anywhere near where we are now. Uh, so let's have a look at. Uh, the missing risk officer. So one of the big issues about uh, um, SVB is uh, uh, that they didn't have a risk officer at the operating period. Um, <coughs> but uh, that's how it's been presented, but it's actually not right. Um, their chief risk officer uh, was a lady called Laura Izurita, uh, obviously a very clever lady, uh, as you're going to see. So. Uh, the uh, first blush you say, well, she was a risk officer. She did a terrible job. There was just no risk control effectively at all. Well, I would give you the opposite view uh, and say she was a pretty clever young lady, as you'll see when you go through this, uh, that um, she'd worked for the company for six and a half years. Uh, and uh, in uh, December 2021, she sold about $4 million worth of her stock um, and that, uh, together with perhaps other issues, triggered some unrest uh, up in the C-suite uh, and uh, they reached an agreement uh, to uh, shift her, to terminate her uh, and move her into a non-executive role uh, uh, in late April 2022. Um, and uh, uh, you can go along and read a bit further here. Uh, they had a uh, bank employee, Angela Morris Lovelace. Uh, was its chief DEI, that stands for Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. It's a very popular description for people who do very little in these companies. Uh, but <coughs> uh, the uh, previous one, uh, Ms. Um, Izurita, uh, stayed on uh, in a non-executive capacity to uh, uh, give them a hand with uh, the transition and particularly to try and find another risk officer who didn't arrive for a long time. Uh, so <coughs> this young lady, <coughs> Miss Izurita, uh, the former chief risk officer, risk officer of Silicon Valley Bank, she negotiated an, an exit package of $7.1 million in April. Uh, and uh, uh, her leaving was unexplained. I, I think what actually triggered it, I have no reason to say this other than it sounds what usually happens. She sold a large whack of stock, about $5 million, 4 or $5 million worth, and uh, the powers of be thought that that didn't show uh, enough commitment. Uh, but uh, uh, despite all that, uh, she was in charge of a lot of the bond buying, um, and uh, she walked away 
uh, with this uh, seven million dollar exit package now have a look at this chart again this is UST bonds it's the same chart uh, the dotted lines look slightly different but it's the same chart have a look when she sells her four million dollars worth of company shares the market's already broken through two lots of standard deviations and it's approaching the third look when she actually leaves in April 2022 more than 50 percent of this move is over 60% of that moves over. Surely at some stage as she was negotiating to leave the company, somebody in a massive big company with a board of directors with various levels of officers above her said, uh, what's our risk profile look like? Uh, but <laughs> strangely enough, they didn't. I mean, it, it, it's, hard, it's hard to put your mind to it. It's hard to believe that this could possibly happen. If you're negotiating a $7 million exit package for your chief risk officer, isn't the first thing you want to know what's the situation now? And that situation when she left, April 2022, you can see the arrow on the chart. 60% of the damage is done. That's it. It's happened. Uh, and uh, the trend is down. It's heading lower. It's taken out a very important low. Uh, and off it goes. So uh, maybe the young lady was just uh, really clever. So that's one of the things that had started us off with the idea of chaos uh, and <laughs> mayhem, and it's just been disastrous. Uh, so there's more to come, folks. This is only the start of it. Uh, you know, might know as well that um, Credit Suisse has been teetering with problems for years and years. Uh, the uh, Swiss Federal Reserve eventually uh, got sick of that and... Uh, <clears throat> they've been trying to prop them up with all sorts of devices um, and they organized um, a uh, takeover uh, by um, UBS which is the other really big uh, Swiss bank so significant things are happening you know I mean Credit Suisse um, has been was founded in July 1856 think about that Think about the history, think about the legacy, and it finishes up, helped by Lex Greenhill, some of you will remember that name, is an Australian, uh, come from Australian sugarcane uh, family, watermelons also they grow, uh, but he um, uh, started Greensill Private Bank and uh, managed to get uh, Credit Suisse on the hook for a whole lot of a whole lot of lending uh, that his bank did. Uh, anyway, that's uh, beside the point. It's over. Um, and uh, let's move on now. Uh, the last few months I've been talking to you a lot about time cycles, um, and I'm just going to wrap it up uh, with a couple of slides that I want to show you here. Uh, for those of you uh, who haven't been following our discussions about time cycles, uh, you can go to the Daniel Code website uh, and you'll see all of the previous uh, videos uh, of uh, our webinars are uh, located under the videos tab. Uh, Terry's just reorganizing them now and they go back years and years and there are many of them <laughs> and uh, uh, it would do your soul good including your trading acumen uh, if you spent some time looking at them. So where we are now in our time cycle believe it or not is still being dominated uh, by the twin highs the dot-com high in 2000 um, and the 2007 high uh, before the flash crash uh, that well it wasn't a flash crash it was a slow crash 2007 to March 2009 uh, which uh, uh, had uh, some people uh, doing handstands uh, in a, not a nice way but that whole structure there the two highs um, and the two lows uh, they are dominating everything that's happening in the uh, S&P at the moment. So have a look at this just quickly. We have different measurements we can take. We have, if you look at the low of October 2022, you can see that there's a chart low there uh, where this uh, count starts from. Um, and that count at 53 goes to the, the, the chart high, uh, the highest bar on the chart with the highest reading and the other one's the lowest. Uh, but in fact, they're not the momentum highs or lows. Uh, the momentum low uh, in October 2022 comes um, three bars earlier. 
uh, and in the momentum high uh, on the S&P at uh, October 2007 comes three bars earlier. And have a look what happens if we move uh, now from the uh, swing highs and swing lows, if we move to the momentum highs and momentum lows, you get exactly the same number. They're both 53. In other words, as that formation of the high in October 2007 was forming, the market <coughs> was mimicking in inverse ratio the low of October 2002, <coughs> which sounds pretty strange, uh, but these things happen. And the whole point about everything to do with trading time and analysis of time is if you see anything obvious, it's not real. Everything about time cycles is subtle, very, very subtle. And it's that subtlety. Uh, I won't say it makes it hard to do the analysis, but you've got to get in the right mindset. You can't try to bully the market. It won't be bullied. Uh, it will give you the numbers. And if they don't suit you, uh, then uh, that's your problem. Uh, and you have to just try and think flexibly about what's this market telling me? And this was an enormous um, event right here uh, that it could match its uh, close to close high low, uh, which is the momentum high low with 53 cycle, uh, that it could then mimic that uh, with the uh, swing high and the swing low on the chart. Uh, very improbable. The probabilities of it are close to zero as don't matter. Um, and then we have the chance of mixing them. So what we have here for this 55 cycle is a momentum low to a swing high. In other words, we're cross pollinating. We're using one of one type and one of the other and looking to see what that gives us. And we got, you see where we got that 55 cycle from. Now we can move that on and simply put it on the 2009 low. Uh, and that's undisputed. That's the momentum low and the chart low. Look what it gives you, 55, once, then twice, then a half gives you the high of January 2022. Let's have a look at this. We know these swings are vital. These are the swings of the uh, March 2020. That was the COVID flash crash. Uh, that's the biggest pullback at that stage uh, since uh, 2000, the lows of 2009. Uh, and the previous uh, correction before that, uh, October 2018, you can see how the two lots of 59, one running from the 2007 high in the S&P, the other running exactly the same period, but running from the low in 2009, they both give us exactly the outside bars that started those two corrections. So we know they're very important numbers. Uh, and Look what we can do with that. We can take our 55, you've just seen me do this, uh, which we call time. Uh, and then we have two lots of 55, one after the other, which we call times. And the final one is n half. Amazing, isn't it? Gives you that high again. And there's more than one way of dealing with that. Have a look at this fella. QED. Quite a rat demonstratum. I laughed like hell when I saw this. Um, and it just popped up for some reason. But uh, back when I was a schoolboy, um, my father was a, a, a terrific mathematician. Uh, in fact, he won the Gray Memorial Prize for Mathematics uh, back in his day, which then was open to everyone uh, in the British Commonwealth. Um, and um, uh, he always used to make me write out uh, when I, what I was trying to prove, and then at the end, uh, I had to write QED, quadrat uh, demonstrandum, that uh, uh, abbreviation for the Latin phrase, uh, that which was to be demonstrated. Uh, in other words, uh, the, the math proves the deed. Uh, and I thought this was great fun, uh, that if you look at this, you've got your first cycle out uh, is time. Then we double that, so we get times. And finally, we finish up with an half, and this one gives us the low. And more importantly than that, we can get the swing low and the momentum low off consecutive bars. Uh, don't trouble yourself with that. That's a 
sort of thing that people like me like to think about, but uh, it doesn't really matter that much, uh, particularly on a long-term chart. So uh, if you have not already, she jumped into the life, but as the Titanic was sinking, oh, she jumped into the lifeboat. Yeah, of course she did. Yeah, she did very well. Smart lady. Uh, <laughs> she could be sitting there with 60% of that damage done and nobody said boo and yes we'll give you a lazy 7 million to keep you going. Corporate life in America is a wonderful thing and not just in America, just a little more obvious in America. So if you haven't already folks, now is an ideal time to take a Daniel Code trading tutorial um, and uh, they're $7,500 uh, and you can go to the website, click on the link uh, and you can read all about what it is and what you'll learn, uh, or you can break it up. It's a lot of money, 7,500, uh, and we've now arranged things so I can break that up for you into two separate uh, webinars. You can do the webinar uh, on price, uh, or you can do the webinar on time, uh, and you can do each of them separately, uh, or you can uh, do one now and the other one later on. And if you were to do that, of course, we'd uh, reduce the price uh, so it didn't cost you any more than if you'd done the full course. Uh, but uh, I've got spaces for two, maybe three people uh, in the next fortnight. If you're ready to start a tutorial, let me know, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Uh, if you're not ready to start a tutorial, you should be. Markets are going to be fantastic and volatile uh, for this year, probably more than we've seen for a while. There, we are seeing enormous trading opportunities. You need to learn this stuff. And uh, Greg Palladini, who of course is with us today, uh, has uh, came back uh, in, uh, I was going to say 2021, I think he corrected me to 2020, didn't you, Greg? Uh, and did a, a second tutorial to learn about trading time. And since then, um, he's just roaring ahead. He came to me as a Forex trader and finish up being a futures trader as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, on under the uh, forum tag at the Daniel Code website, which you can access with a free membership if you're on a membership at trial, uh, the uh, 2021 for Greg here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Greg kindly uh, ran a thread under forum uh, about his experiences uh, doing the Daniel Code trading tutorial. Um, and uh, he'd been so generous to us, allowing us to use his uh, proper name and to post all of those. It's been a huge help uh, to many, many people. Uh, Greg and we are most appreciative. Okay, let's look at the secret source. Volatility will be explosive all year. There's much more to come from inflation, Ukraine, Europe, more banking issues. They're just a few starters. Um, and the secret source is knowing the Daniel Code time and price rating rules. Have a look at this. You've seen this before, some of you. Uh, this is um, a scrunched up. Uh, daily chart of gold um, and you can see looking at time cycles what I've done here I've just run the basic Daniel Code time cycle through it um, no adjustment just as it is now there are a few more uh, turns than are on this uh, particular sheet uh, but you'll get the idea because the idea is that every significant high and every significant low Remember, we started this in July 2020. Every significant high and every significant low has come at the expiration of the basic Daniel Code time cycle. And it's quite extraordinary, isn't it? <coughs> in fact, folks who come to me and learn how to trade time in particular, they see this and they say, well, stop there, I'll have that. <laughs> That'll do me. And of course, we have clients who trade this um, on, on 29 day cycles. Uh, it's quite extraordinary. It's a thing of great beauty uh, and it's completely real, I assure you. Uh, and that's how you look at time cycles. So, this is COMEX Gold on the April contract. Um, and you can see it uh, starts off with a lot of those little dots and dashes um, and then it morphs into being uh, a full grown market. And I wanted to show you a few things on it. Uh, first of all, I wanted to show you this recent high uh, in February. Um, and that was the false break. Uh, it was pretty interesting. And remember that fast moves come from false breaks. Uh, and uh, we were looking for that there and got it. 
uh, and that gave us uh, well the, the total trade down was about ten and a half thousand dollars not suggesting we got all of that we got bits and pieces of that uh, but since then uh, it's been even better um, and of course it's up slightly today a bit weak on the days bar but anyway it's up more uh, so uh, we had this momentum and the closing high that gave us target recognition. We then had the breakthrough bar after the false break that also gave us target recognition. And it went down and down until it hit to DC target recognition. A uh, little rally there, three or four or five days. And from there it's gone pretty much straight down with one break, uh, one one bar break and one two or three bar break, nothing of any significance. Uh, and at that low, look how it did a key reversal bar right off the blue line number there. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, up into DC target recognition at the 59%, straight down, same thing, another TO3 buy signal uh, with uh, almost perfect target recognition uh, uh, at, its, uh, at its close. I put the arrow on that small bar there that gave us the target recognition, which enabled us to buy this uh, move up now. Uh, which was worth some part of $14,000 with one uh, counter trend in the way. Have a look here. Uh, this is the same chart. Have a look at this target recognition issue. It is so vital. That's the secret source. Uh, you can see this market can go on and on, but I'm not going to say that every bit of target recognition gives you a turn, but I am going to say that if you don't have target recognition, the probability of getting a turn is very, very small. And I mean down in single digit percentages, uh, very, very low indeed. Um, have a look at this run up here. This is the same chart. Uh, and I wanted to show you the target recognition, how hard it is to find it. Uh, this issue of target recognition, I've dealt with a couple of times because we always get some smarty that says if you put enough numbers on the chart, one of them found to stop it. That's not the point. What we're concerned about and what we're looking for is what markets do when they find these numbers. How do they react? And to get target recognition, it's very tough. You've got to be within 0.1% not 1%, one tenth of 1%, 0.1% of whatever the number is. And you can see on this uh, numbers here, this uh, prices here are up around 1900 up to uh, 2020, 2030. So 0.1% of that is 1.8 or 1.9 points in the lower part of this chart, up to two. Uh, 2.0, in other words, 20 ticks variance up near the higher parts of this chart. Um, and to get that level of exactitude is very, very hard. And I'm showing you here where it's happened. Uh, and it's interesting uh, that almost everywhere you've had a reaction. Look at this up from the bottom where you start seeing target recognition. You get a reaction. Some of it's only a one bar counter trend. Uh, some of it's a two bar counter trend. Uh, as it gets nearer the high, it's a little more complex. But it doesn't have target recognition, so it doesn't turn until it's had that last burst up of target recognition impacting at the 1971 level. It's just so beautiful once you understand this stuff. Uh, you need never be frightened of trading because trading, the market is actually trying to help you. Um, as I'll show you in a few minutes, markets are actually trying to talk to you. In fact, markets do talk to you. The problem was that before we had the Daniel Code, we didn't have the language that we could understand markets. Now we've got the Daniel Code, we've got that language. And at all of these target recognition points, what the market is saying to you is, I know these numbers and I'm tracking them. I know these numbers and I'm tracking them. When it switches off that cycle and you don't get a uh, target recognition uh, for a reasonable period of time, it's saying not this ratio, try another ratio. And that's why for the members charts that I prepare for you guys, you'll see there's usually two, sometimes three, sometimes even four different cycles active and markets will switch between those cycles. Uh, that 
once you know what they are, it's just so beautiful. Have a look at this. Um, trading the high. Uh, we had a, a TO3 buy signal uh, down at February 28th, up into the little high, got a TO3 sell signal right at that high that impacted on the blue line at 1853. Down it went, set up a new TO3 buy signal. Off it went, big run up here. Uh, of uh, 14 odd thousand into the next cell uh, signal um, and we've had a this was uh, prepared at three o'clock this morning uh, so my morning here um, and um, the market's got up again uh, slightly today but look how exact this stuff is this is not happenstance when this market has target recognition it means something and it does something we had target recognition on the bar before the high and then we had a snapback key reversal bar. But look where it turned. That high, almost exactly at Daniel Code target recognition. Extraordinary stuff. You should know this stuff. You should learn this stuff. This is how you should trade. You should know where this market's going to go. This is a, a fairly old chart. Uh, this is actually a chart that I use for uh, teaching students um, and this is gold um, and um, I'm using gold today quite prominently because first of all it's terribly popular nearly everyone says I want to trade the S&P in gold uh, but it's also one of the most difficult markets to trade because it has so much commentary about it and the markets that have the most commentary are the worst trading markets in general terms the markets that have the least commentary are the cleanest best trading uh, markets so uh, you've got to walk a bit of a fine line when you're finding those markets uh, just to make sure that there's enough volume in there uh, jerry uh, winter who's an old pal always used to tell me can't have that market not enough volume um, and of course he knew his stuff uh, superbly well and uh, very grateful to jerry for all the encouragement and help he's given me over the years and some of the very, very fine steak dinners we've had when I go meet Jerry in Colorado Springs. Wonderful. Those Idaho potatoes, boy. <laughs> There's something. Okay. So this is, as I say, an old piece of chart. This is 2015 Comex Gold. I use this piece of chart for teaching because it's a shocker. Almost, almost everything bad that can happen happens in here, um, including switches of trend, uh, false breaks, all sorts of interesting things. Uh, lack of signals at the loss of volatility at the bottom there in July 2015 and so on. So where would you look at for your buy and sell signals and, and start from uh, the July low, 2015 July low. Uh, so you can see the stochastic goes up, it gets overbought, uh, but the uh, peril of stochastics, uh, as we all know, is they can stay overbought much longer than you can stay financial uh, and then it uh, dies dives down and uh, gets below our uh, uh, probably 25% uh, on this chart, not 20%, uh, twice uh, at two lows, uh, rallies up to the uh, overbought level again, dives down to the oversold level, then goes up to overbought and pretty well stays there, uh, pretty much for the whole rally all the way up and a few days afterwards. So um, what you see in the uh, bottom panel here uh, is uh, our proprietary uh, momentum indicator. It's uh, different to anything you've ever seen before um, and it allows you to compare momentum not just day to day which is a traditional way on a daily chart but swing to swing as well which is its unique characteristic. So uh, where would you be buying and where would you be selling after July? Well if you have a look at the stochastic there's probably about a third of the bars here who have got sell signals sitting on that's no good because it's not accurate enough. Uh, if you had uh, some divergence on the momentum indicators, that will narrow it a bit, but it's still lots of trades that didn't work uh, and uh, never going to work. And this is what you need to do. The difference here is that I've added the Daniel Code Retracement Tool. All of you who've got uh, are subscribed to the uh, Daniel Code Web Pro, you've got that tool. It's a uh, uh, a little uh, mascot uh, down the hedgehog uh, and you just 
drag it from one point to the other, from a low to a high or a high to a low, and it creates the Daniel code ratio. So look what happened after July the 24th. The market went up, 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 uh, and it got up into that first high where I put nine tick variance. That was the difference between the price on the red line, which was 1167, and the high of that bar. Then it went down. There was only one place where we got target recognition. That's the line I said on there, two tick variance. We would allow in this price range here, this was down at $1,100 back in the day. Uh, so we were allowing 1.1 variance or 11 ticks. So we had nine ticks at the high, two tick variance at that low. The next rally gave us the next sell signal. Um, I haven't put the number on there, uh, but uh, it was less than three or four ticks. Uh, then uh, down, <coughs> four tick variance at the uh, outside bar low, roared up eight tick variance at the high. <coughs> and there were two numbers at that high, uh, which shows to show the fractal nature of markets, uh, that a 74% retracement of one swing was an 89% retracement of the other swing. Now, when you look at this chart, it starts back in May. The first high back there is May the 18th, 2015. The lines are all drawn, the retracements are drawn from the low in July 2015. As we move along and we get to the uh, last high, the later highs in October 2015, think about this. These Daniel Code ratios are all set numbers. They don't change. What changes is the size of the chart. In other words, uh, the difference, the distance between um, a swing low and a swing high. And that's created entirely by the chart. So get your head around this. If I asked you to create uh, the black line at 1191 uh, in uh, October 2015, uh, you'd say, fine, sure, that's great. I know what that is. It's 89 point something percent. That's good. But percent of what? To be able to create that number, you would have to know what the true high was from May 2015 at the high, and the true low number was in July 2015. And we're now up to October, five months later. Is it possible that markets can remember the highs and lows going back five months, which is 100 odd bars or more? Well, yes. In fact, not only is it possible, it's mandatory. It can't create the Daniel Code price levels unless it can remember that high and low. Extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the secret source. The things that look random become very controlled, very precise once you're using <coughs> the Daniel Code <coughs> ratios of time and price. Let's see what we've got next to it. I wanted to go back and just go through one example with you uh, that I thought was on this chart and it doesn't seem to be. <coughs> and that's the pullback into that uh, large outside bar, uh, which is uh, sometime uh, in October 2015. And you can see uh, that high uh, had target recognition um, and I haven't put it on the chart, forgive me. It was about four ticks from memory. Uh, and then it went down. Uh, but look what happened as it went down. Let me just see if I haven't uh, made uh, put this uh, chart in the wrong place. Uh, no, I haven't, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, it's this run down here. Uh, I'll just get the uh, right tool for that. Uh, and... Um, mm -hmm. Here it is, and it's called Spotlight. Here we are. So it's this swing from this high down to this low here. And have a look what happens from that high. The first bar down, we actually had a sell signal there. We got an inside bar. Then the very next bar went down, and its low came at 1127.3. 
and uh, you can't see it because it's not on this chart but the uh, Daniel Code red line was at 1127.1 in other words two ticks variance that's all and that's the market's way of talking to you the market is saying I know these numbers and I'm tracking them the very next day the market uh, opened pretty much where the close was um, it rallies up uh, and it makes its high for the day uh, which is interesting but not material for us at 1134.3 against the Daniel Code red line sitting there at 1134.4 one tick variance <coughs> it then goes down it goes a bit further down uh, than the big bar uh, and it doesn't give us any target recognition at the low but remember target recognition is valid at the bar high low or on the close and the close of that bar uh, is 1126.8 against the Daniel Code number at 1127.1 that's three ticks variance the next bar down the bigger bar accelerating down it doesn't give us any target recognition it runs straight through uh, two numbers uh, it runs through 1121.6 and 1112.8 and doesn't give us any numbers this is a fairly high momentum move uh, and I remember trading this because the world was short and thought it was going to the center of the earth uh, and then we got this really tiny bar here uh, which was October the 1st 2015 and this is a really small not much activity bar and it closes at 1113.7 against the red line at 1112.8 so that's nine ticks variance we allow 11 and ticks variance that's within our allowable that's target recognition and that's what sets up the buy the next day and the next day the market opens roars down everyone thinks it's going uh, to uh, Hades or so uh, and look where the low is the low of that big outside bar is 1103.8 the Daniel code black line the famous black line which is the last level of support or resistance for any swing was at 1104.2 so just four ticks variance forces a, 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 a key reversal bar a major key reversal bar away it goes and you make two and a half thousand dollars uh, in the next few days uh, simply for knowing uh, where to put your stop okay let's move on because uh, we've got more to go and I'm running out of time a little bit uh, here we are uh, this is just showing you you know how equities have been really um, crunched lately they don't know what they're doing they're trying to find a direction uh, uh, Nasdaq very bullish uh, Russell uh, very muted uh, and uh, that's what's been going on don't be stressed by that sort of stuff remember there's other markets everywhere uh, this was doesn't none of these uh, bars have today's bar on this one doesn't at least uh, but uh, nice trading um, in Forex uh, here's another one euro has been very strong a little bit uh, not quite as much strength today but you know there was a really simple thousand dollar short trade on a to3 sell signal and uh, a 2200 uh, on a correlated buy signal really basic stuff this is the British pound US dollar a little more complex here we had a nice to3 buy gave us about 2800 to3 sell gave us about seven or eight seven hundred eight hundred dollars uh, and then we didn't get the buy signal but we got a flip me uh, for those of you who remember flip me uh, we got long uh, flip me is what happens when you have a valid Daniel code trade signal uh, that is reversed in other words the protective stop is hit within three trading days uh, and when that happens uh, you're in trouble uh, and you need to do something about it and what you need to do is flip your position if you were short get long if you were long get short so that gives us um, a nice little uh, trade uh, into uh, yesterday's high and it's gone a little bit better uh, today so lots of opportunities look at this this is the one I want to show you with these markets talking to you have a look now uh, and let's put that spotlight back really quickly uh, so you can see uh, what I was talking about uh, this is the high here it comes on uh, September the 24th 2015 we had a sell signal we short below the inside bar down it goes look at this first bar down uh, this bar is actually 
that's the one I'm talking about there, uh, which is uh, September 28, uh, 2015. Look where its low is. 1127.1 is the Daniel Code number. That low was actually at 1127.3. Two ticks variance. That target recognition. What about the next bar? Well, it opens and it rallies straight up to the old, um, what was support and was ignored uh, on the way down uh, is now resistance at 1134.4. None of that matters. What does matter is look where it closed. Uh, the close of that bar uh, was um, 1126.8. Uh, there's the number against it, 1127.1, three tick variance, target recognition. The next bar, as I say, we didn't get target recognition, and that's why this little bar was created. The market put that there for one reason, one reason only, to show you that its close was 1113.7 against the Daniel Code red line of 1112.9. That's eight tick variance. That's allowable within our 11 tick maximum variance. And that's what sets up the buy order for the next day. And you get a lovely buy order. It bounces off the black line. Uh, and uh, stops like it was shot down there, and you make 22, 2,500 uh, in a matter of a few days just by knowing uh, where to put your stop. So uh, that was uh, pretty nice stuff. Uh, let's move on uh, because time is uh, running out. Here we are. Uh, soybeans, nice trade in soybeans today, uh, 2,200 odd in a couple of days. A uh, lot of volatility is what I'm saying. There's never been a better time to learn trading, folks. This is going to go on and on and on. Wonderful, isn't it? 2,200 from um, a two-day trade. Super stuff. Uh, this is natural gas. Uh, we've been having a ball with natural gas. $4,000 on the way up on a TO3 buy signal. Uh, $2,000 on the way down. Uh, stop gave a little one-bar counter trend. 4,400 on that. And then uh, from the uh, flip me low, uh, we got another $1,000 into today's low. Wonderful stuff. Use all of your rules all of the time. Okay, if I didn't get you the first time, let me point out that I can take two or three uh, new traders to do uh, a Daniel Code trading tutorial. Uh, if doing the whole tutorial is uh, too much or too expensive, break it up into pieces. We've organized so you can do that now. Uh, you can do the price tutorial for 4500 You can do the time tutorial for 4500 uh, Or you can tell me uh, I'm doing one now and I'm going to do the other one later uh, and we'll adjust the price so you don't pay any more than you would for a full tutorial. But there's never been a better time. I'm excited about trading and I've been doing this for 30 years or so. Uh, and not much else in life excites me these days, I can tell you. But Boy, these markets are fabulous. Get into them as quickly as you can, and I can have you trading like a pro in three days. Really. I've done a lot of this. I know what I'm talking about. Remember, folks, although I talked to you about uh, showing you how accurate these markets are, remember that the business of trading is not to be right. The business is making money, uh, and that's how we measure ourselves. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, go and have a free trial. Uh, at www.thedanielco.com. Any problems, contact Terry at support at thedanielco.com. If you've been registered with us previously, the machine will remember you and won't want to give you another free trial. It's a bit mean like that. Uh, but contact Terry. Uh, he'll sort that out for you uh, straight away. Uh, and remember, uh, trading, if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not skilled and trained, trading is very risky, 90% of new traders lose their first bank um, in 90 days. Uh, that's the industry standard. I think that's wrong. I think 90% lose their first bank in 30 days or less. It's very easy to lose money trading if you don't know what you're doing. It's also very easy to make money and a lot of money if you do know what you're doing. So get, uh, get educated uh, and um, the quicker the better. Janet's with us. Uh, Jerry, you remember Janet, um, lovely lady, came to a number of tutorials uh, in Colorado Springs, she did, and uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and we haven't heard from Janet for years, uh, and she came back and joined our last webinar, uh, and she's with us today. Janet, lovely to have you with us, absolute pleasure. Uh, and time you did an upgrade of your tutorial 
uh, Janet and uh, got right up to speed on it all. Uh, well, that's it for today, folks. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, be prepared to be shocked and horrified by what's going on in this banking sector. Uh, those ripples don't just go away, I promise you. Uh, they're rippling and vibrating somewhere, uh, and that'll be the next big story. So be alert, uh, be trading, uh, and uh, thank you for being uh, with me today. Anything you need me to do next time we're doing this, please drop me a line, jneedham at thedanielcode.com. Uh, if you have any particular questions, I'll be happy to uh, address them at our next webinar. Bye-bye for now.